Hello, welcome to another video from Chorley Photographic Society. My name's Howard Brown. Um, so we're going to talk about, in a moment, about um, some of my workflow and process. Oh, sorry, before we start, have you noticed that we've got a Pacemaker 300 here? State of the art back in 1983. It was actually used on the set of Octopussy with Roger Moore. So yeah. Quality bit of kit, that, to be quite honest, but there you go. Sorry, I digress. Right, we have got, um, going to take you through workflow of um, basically zoo animals and um, what I tend to do um, with, with uh, zoo animals and um, portraiture of animals in particular um, to less of the impact of uh, distracting backgrounds and things using burning and dodging and vignetting and different techniques okay i did a, a pre-talk at uh, chorley photographic society um a few weeks ago on this and uh, people requested that uh, that i did a did a short video on this can't guarantee it's going to be short because there is quite a lot to um to do uh, using both lightroom and uh, Photoshop, okay, uh, it's quite involved. Um, I would recommend that you find your own workflow to do something similar. This is my workflow, um, and I'll give you me the inside track on how I edit uh, this type of picture, okay? But please, have a play, use the tools, use your own workflow, De sorry, develop your own workflow. All right, let's get into it then, okay. So on screen here, what we've got is we've got a, um, a gorilla, okay? And um, this, this fine gorilla is uh, it's quite a good capture and um, it's a little bit light. So I'm gonna do some global editing in uh, Lightroom, okay? First of all, as I said, I use Lightroom and I flip back into Photoshop and backwards and forwards. I tend to use Lightroom for the versatility of uh, global um, exposure control, uh, contrasts, um, vignetting, that sort of thing, yeah. I use Photoshop predominantly for dodging and burning, um, removing unwanted elements from the picture, uh, using clone tools, etc. It's much, much more powerful, okay? Lightroom can be a bit clunky at times with certain things. It's great for exposure control. It's not so great for uh, intricate and detailed work, okay? So what we've got is we've got um, a gorilla in, in, uh, pre being presented in Lightroom, okay? And what we're going to do is I'm just going to basically take the highlights down somewhat. So I'm going to use that slider until we can start to bring the features of the uh, gorilla under control, okay? I'm gonna use a bit of contrast as well, just to, to sort of bring the gorilla out of the picture somewhat and add a bit of clarity in the image as well, just to get that definition of the fur. And these are all things that I do before I start putting heavy vignettes on, etc. I'm gonna slide down the right-hand side of the panel and I'm going to um, just introduce quite a heavy vignette around the uh, subject, okay? Almost to the end, around about 85%. Uh, I'm gonna alter the midpoint as well, so bring it in further. And I'm also gonna feather it somewhat, just to make sure it's nice and soft, okay? Um, quite happy with that, okay? We'll just peek in on the image and just make sure we've got the right exposure control, which we have, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna edit in, and I'm gonna choose Photoshop. The reason why I do this while it's loading is um, it's very easy just to click save and your image will be transported back into Lightroom. Then I can do some more global exposure control or global control, um, you know, with vignettes and things like that. And um, yeah, so. Once we've done that, um, for some reason, the um, editing hasn't come through in Photoshop, but never mind, it's fine, we can carry on. Uh, this isn't my, uh, my usual 
MacBook or my usual infrastructure, this, my IT infrastructure. So um, we will carry on. Okay. So one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to take out a lot of the highlights around the animal. Okay. And I'm going to use um, a lot of burn. Okay. As you can see. So I'm going to choose that. Um, it's almost like a clenched fist, the burn tool. All right. Uh, and I'm also going to choose highlights at the top. Um, we'll see what happens. Yeah. So I'm going to take that down to, sorry, boost that up to around about 70%. And I'm going to, just going to start ever so slowly painting around the animal. Okay. It's quite a long process, this. Okay. So we'll just start painting around the animal. Don't worry too much if we chop into the fur or chop into the hand or the head of the animal. Uh, you'll see why later, okay? So we're gonna do that. And it just brings the subject out of the background somewhat, okay? And that in itself is a good technique if you really want to pop the image, okay? It's bringing that subject out of the background, all right? Then we're gonna use, uh, choose the mid-tones. Again, leaving it at 71% because we want to make the background almost uh, dark. Again, this is dodging and burning. It's fine to use for competitions, etc. for the PAGV, if, if you're worried about that. But we're just working on those mid-tones now through the image. Working our way around. You'll start to get small halos, etc in the image, but don't worry too much if it starts to go a little bit muddy, okay? I'm gonna decrease the size of the brush, and this is quite a rough edit, really, as we're doing this um, for a video. I would spend probably 30, 40 minutes on, on an image like this, okay? And then we'll start to work on the shadows. As you can see, with dodging and burning, it will take you, take most of the, the actual background out now you will still get some sort of some halos around the um, the animal but don't worry we'll sort those out in a minute and the shadows will just take so it is a gradual process working with your highlights working with your mid-tones and finally working with your shadows okay you want to leave as much detail as you can in uh, don't worry too much about the fine hairs around the, the animal, okay? We'll show you why in a minute. Again, you'll develop your own workflow if you decide to, to edit in the same way, but you will develop your own style and your own tool set for doing this, okay? And I've just zoomed in slightly and we're just working our way around the animal in between its fingers, just working our way around the image, there we go, working those gaps, don't worry too much about the uh, hair around the animal, we'll see why in a minute, because I'm going to take it back over to Lightroom to do some global exposures, there we go, alright that's starting to shape up somewhat, okay. So I'm just going to save that now, and that's saved. And I'm just going to nip over to Lightroom just to see if it's been imported back in, which it has. Okay, so quite happy with that. We'll go back over to Photoshop. Okay. So we're back in Lightroom. We've got the uh, roughly edited uh, picture of the gorilla, okay? I'm just gonna take, now this is the magic thing, I'm just gonna take some of the exposure down slightly. As you can see, that's about 1.4, 1.5 exposure, all right? You want the, the main part of the image to be, uh, the main part, the face of the, uh, of the gorilla to be the brightest element, okay? I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go back into Photoshop and edit. For some reason it's not importing those. 
um, global changes. Not to worry. I'm going to export that image. Okay. Usually, if you edit in, it just exports it straight into Photoshop. Okay. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to export it to a file. Bear with me. On the desktop. I'm not going to put it in a subfolder. I'm just going to export it. I'm going to use a unique name. I'm going to open up Photoshop. Here we go. Use the latest one, which is that one. And what we're going to do now is really finish the image off. Okay. I'm going to take those unwanted elements out of the image. Um, things like grass and hair and things that are basically just make the image look untidy okay but it's still keeping the main subject the focal point of the uh, of the photograph okay i'm going to use spot healing tool i'm just going to start removing all these bits of grass spots and blemishes from the image there we go just to tidy it up And it's starting to shape up somewhat okay there we go really nice looking image now okay i'm going to take and this is still classed as dodging and burning i'm going to take a um a brush uh tool uh, i'm going to make sure it's black the brush tool um, i'm going to choose quite a soft brush as well okay so minimum hardness of the brush. Um, I'm also going to make sure that uh, the opacity is down at around about maybe 15%. And I'm going to make sure the flow is around about the same, 20%, 15 20%. And we'll just start to experiment. Because what I want to do is um, I just want to choose the brush. And I want to make sure that... Bear with me. Let's choose the brush tool again. This isn't my Photoshop list, so everything's slightly different. So we'll just take the, the opacity and the flow down somewhat. I'm going to increase the size of the brush. I'm going to make sure that the brush is a soft brush. So I'm going to take that hardness right down. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to just chip away at this image, okay? We're almost doing a manual vignette to this image. We're going to make the dark areas quite dark. And we're going to make the light areas stand out somewhat, okay? So we just really want to chip away. I'm going to increase the opacity somewhat. There we go. I'm just going to take... Make sure that, that the image, the face of that creature, that gorilla, is absolutely at the forefront of the image. There you go. Taking all the unwanted elements out. And that is a beautiful image. Okay, so what we've done, let me summarise what we've done. We've used Photoshop and we've used Lightroom. We started off in Lightroom, okay. I use Lightroom for global adjustments, such as exposure, uh, putting manual vignettes in, okay? See, most of the work's actually done in, in Lightroom, okay? I then um, edit the picture in Photoshop again, taking unwanted elements out of the picture, such as um, blemishes or spots on your sensor, etc. okay? Blades of grass or muck, whatever it is, okay? And then what I'm using is I'm using a combination of dodging and burning. So burning really to take, um, to, to bring that really heavy vignette onto the, uh, onto the animal. I'm using, I'm burning out, first of all, it's a three layer approach. I'm burning out the, um, the highlights. So I'm taking those right down. I'm burning out the mid-tones, okay? For, and secondly and lastly, which is where most of the work is done, 
<coughs> for a black background and taking the shadows out okay and then what I'm doing is um, I'm then editing back in Lightroom okay I'm doing some more global adjustments predominantly with exposure really to bring those shadows right down into the creature okay you're starting to crop right in on the the creature's fur etc okay and then bringing the image back into Photoshop and I'm then using a very soft uh, very um, sort of quite a small opacity um, you know a, a brush that's not got much flow to it so opacity might be 20 uh, the flow might be 20 but do play with that I'm using a black brush okay a soft black brush and I'm just starting to chip away at the creatures fur in the dark areas I'm, I'm just embellishing those dark areas I'm just chipping away again like I said it is my workflow it's quite personal to me have a go have a play see what you can do thanks for watching thank you Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please leave us some comments down below. There's a button just there as well that you can use to, uh, to subscribe to our channel. And uh, if you want to watch some more videos, try these two because uh, they've, uh, they've been picked from our channel that um, hopefully you'll enjoy those. Um, until next time, thank you very much for watching.